Hi folks who are taking Chem 120. My name is Dr. Palmer and I'm going to be walking you through um, the experimental goal and kind of the general experimental setup for the KHP lab. So essentially if you were doing this lab on campus, you would be given a white powdered sample And that sample would have an unknown percent of KHP. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean, if you were to look at the total grams of the sample that we gave you, the total grams of the white powder, some amount of the mass would be coming from KHP, and some amount of the mass would be something else. We don't know what else is in there. It's going to be your job to determine what we call the mass percent, or the percent KHP in the sample. So your job is to determine the percent KHP in the sample by titration. And you're going to be titrating with a strong base, sodium hydroxide. So that might not make a whole lot of sense yet, but let's start by just trying to ask ourselves what is KHP? Let's look at its structure and try to understand why is it that we're titrating KHP with a strong base. So below right here is a skeletal structure of the anion of KHP. So this structure right here is an anion. It has a negative charge um, of minus one. And what I'd like you to start by doing is, this is a skeletal structure. Not every atom has an octet yet. So I want you to give every atom an octet, and I want you to um, notice there should be a formal charge of minus one on one of the atoms. And remember, it's most stable for the most electronegative atom to have a minus charge. So pause the video for a second and try to do that. Give every atom an octet and only one atom should have a formal charge of minus one. All right, hopefully you paused for a second and did that. Um, I'm just gonna go start from this side and kind of work my way around and fill, um, have, make sure each atom has an octet. So this oxygen needs two lone pairs. Um, this carbon was missing a bond, so now it has an octet. I'm going to give this oxygen two lone pairs. I'm noticing that all of these carbons only have three bonds. They only have six electrons around them. So I'm going to go ahead and give the alternating double bonds in the structure. I'm noticing this carbon needs an octet, so I'm going to give it a double bond and then oxygen two lone pairs. And it must be that this oxygen on the end has three lone pairs in order to complete its octet. And remember, formal charge is the number of valence electrons an atom has as a neutral atom, which is six for oxygen, minus how many electrons formally belong to it. You count lone pairs as one and bond, or sorry, lone pairs as two and bonds as one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this oxygen has a minus charge, and I'm just gonna erase this. Okay, so what you're looking at here, this structure is phthalate, okay? It's the hydrogen phthalate or the acid phthalate. So it's the HP part of the molecule. And the K is potassium, it's a counter ion. Um, to make sure that this compound is electrically neutral. 
So this right here is an ionic interaction. So you could imagine when you dissolve KHP in solution, the ions dissociate and what you have is a whole lot of HP minus and K plus dissociated. Now, in some of the classes, you, like in my class, we discussed how structure relates to acid strength. Um, so if you're looking, you might ask yourself, you know, are these H's acidic? Well, no, carbon's not a very electronegative atom and it's super small. So these H's are not gonna dissociate. But this right here is an acidic H, meaning um, it's gonna dissociate. It's gonna be a weak acid that dissociates to a partial extent in solution. But if we react it with a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, then sodium hydroxide is strong enough to rip off all of those H's. So every single one will react. And we've learned that when OH minus and H plus react, they form water, H2O. And you can imagine that if this H dissociates as H plus, it leaves behind another lone pair, so it's gonna mimic what's happening here. So I'm gonna use, because I don't have a ton of space, I'm gonna use a line structure that's common to organic chemistry to represent this molecule. So this hexagonal structure, each point represents a carbon, and I'm drawing in the double bonds, and then I'm gonna show a carbon with an oxygen and a hydrogen. Okay, so two formal charges now. Um, this is basically P minus, P2 minus, um, with the H dissociated. So this is the reaction we're working with. And you can notice it's one H plus for one NaOH. The base and the acid react in a one-to-one -one ratio. And that'll be important to keep in mind when we do the titration. So what is the general setup here? You're gonna watch a video after this um, where we as faculty recorded kind of the overall setup and I took some snapshots of it just so you have a general idea what you're looking at before you watch the video. So if you did the lab, you would be given um, the unknown KHP powder and you would put it in a way boat. The way boat has this kind of funny tap so I'm just gonna draw this for us here. Okay, and you would have some amount of your unknown sample. And ultimately what we want to do with this sample is dissolve it in solution so that we can titrate it. So you would take this unknown sample and you would essentially um, dump it into an Erlenmeyer flask. And once you do that, you would reweigh your weigh bottle and by subtraction, if you take the, the mass of the weigh bottle with your unknown and the mass of the weigh bottle with whatever KHP unknown remains, if you take the difference, you should be able to figure out how much mass of KHP you dispensed into your Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so just so you have kind of a picture to take with you. You're going to dispense this unknown into an Erlenmeyer flask, or you would if we were on campus. We are basically going to do it for you, but I want you to know kind of where all the data is coming from. And then you would take the mass again of your mostly empty whey bottle that has probably some KHP remaining in it. So there might be kind of little bits left. So 
I'm just going to show you, you're going to get a data table that has um, asks that's going to give you basically the mass of the whey bottle with the KHP unknown. In this case, it was 15.0188 grams. And then you're going to remass the bottle with the remaining KHP. So that's kind of just the little bit that's left afterwards. And you're going to be asked to use mass by difference to figure out, well, how much KHP then was dispensed into this Erlenmeyer flask. So this is kind of your mass one, and this is the mass two. So two data points there. Then what we would do is add water essentially to try to dissolve the unknown um, that's there. So to this Erlenmeyer flask, what we would do is add some amount of water. Now, anywhere between 50 mils and 75 mils. Notice that's a pretty wide range, and we'd be adding DI water. So in a second, it'll make sense why, why it doesn't matter that the volume um, could be anywhere in this range. So here now, we've added water. We've dissolved our unknown. And we're also going to add indicator, three drops of indicator. Okay, and our indicator is phenolphthalein, and it's going to turn pink when our solution changes from acidic to basic. So turn pink when basic. And that's going to help us know when we've reached the end point. Of our titration. Okay, so the last step is going to be to titrate. So I'm just going to draw, you're going to have sodium hydroxide in a burette. And this Erlenmeyer flask with your unknown potassium acid phthalate is going to be right beneath it. Now, I want us to think about um, the molecular view, right? We said that the acid phthalate is going to dissociate from the K+. Plus. Um, potassium is just going to be a spectator ion in this reaction. So it's still showing up at the end. It's just hanging out in solution. And it's the HP minus that's going to be reacting. So there's going to be some number of moles of the acid phthalate hanging out in this solution. What you want to know is how many moles Why do we care about how many moles? Well, you're ultimately trying to figure out the mass percent. And the mass percent, I think I said in the beginning, is going to be grams of KHP divided by grams of your unknown sample. Times 100% meaning you want to know what fraction of the total mass is um, made up of KHP. So if you could figure out how many moles of KHP or HP minus that you have, you could then convert to grams. And you'll already know the mass of the unknown sample because you'll have figured out by using mass by difference what mass of your unknown is, your unknown sample, is in this Erlenmeyer flask that's been dissolved. 
So all we care about is moles. So that can help you make sense of this. We're not interested in concentration. We don't care about the molarity of KHP. We only care about moles of KHP. Okay, but how are we going to figure out how many moles of KHP, oh, I'll add the potassium. are hanging out in our solution. Well, we already said we're going to do an acid-base reaction. We're going to be adding sodium hydroxide. And as we add hydroxide, it's going to be reacting with the acid phthalate and making the conjugate base. So the moment that we use up all of the acid and we add one more drop that's going to turn the solution basic, that's when the solution is going to turn pink. That's your endpoint. And what's going to be true is that the moles of sodium hydroxide that you've added should equal the moles of KHP that exist in this unknown solid. So one second. So you're I want to point out one more thing. So when you do this titration, you're going to have some initial volume of sodium hydroxide. You're going to titrate, which means the volume is going to be kind of dropping into this solution, and you're going to have some final volume of sodium hydroxide. And again, if you do volume by difference, that should show you the total volume of sodium hydroxide you used. So you're going to know the volume of NaOH. And we're going to tell you the molarity of NaOH. In this case, the initial volume was 26.47 milliliters. The final volume, 0.68. So if you find the volume by difference, meaning if you subtract these two numbers, you'll figure out your sodium hydroxide used. And here's the molarity of it. You're going to get data for three trials. I'm just showing you for one. So you'll get data for both of these. And what you'll do with this set of data is calculate the percent by mass of KHP in the sample. You'll have three different mass percents. You'll then find the average. And we'd like you to... Sorry, I think I made one small video on this. We'd like you to um, not only calculate the mass percent, but find the percent precision. Okay, and I'll say more about what that means. So I'd like you to pause the video and just think for a moment. How would you use this data to find the mass percent? Keeping in mind, again, that mass percent is grams of KHP over grams of sample times 100%. Take a moment, use the data, see if you can work it out. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you gave it a try. Um, so in terms of a plan here, we know in our titration that the moles of sodium hydroxide that were added to our Erlenmeyer flask to titrate it are going to equal the moles of KHP. And we know once you get to moles of KHP, you can convert to grams of KHP. So the question is, how do we you know, start by finding moles of sodium hydroxide well, we can use the volume in milliliters 
convert that to liters and then take the molarity to get to moles. Okay, so um, I went ahead and figured out that um, the volume used is 25.79 milliliters. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna say, I know that I use 25.79 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to get to the endpoint, to get to this place where moles of hydroxide equals moles of KHP. I'm gonna convert that to liters, so I know that there's a thousand milliliters for one liter. And I know the molarity, I'm given it right here. So that's moles per liter. So for every one liter, there's 0 0.09895 moles of sodium hydroxide. So my liters cancel. Great, now I know that it's a one-to-one -one ratio between hydroxide and KHP. So for every one mole of NaOH, one mole of KHP reacts. And I'm so close. Now I just need to go from moles of KHP to grams of KHP, and I'm gonna tell you the molar mass. For every one mole of KHP, there's 204.22 grams of KHP. So when I do that, I should see that in my Erlenmeyer flask, there were 0 0.52, I think this is right, 115 grams of KHP. So my last question then is, well, what percent of the total mass is that? So if I figured out how much KHP unknown, so the total mass of the sample, um, by subtracting these two, I think you get 1.6170. grams of sample. You can check me on that. So we're going to divide now. We're going to take 1.6170 grams of sample. So that gives me kind of the fraction of the mass that comes from KHP. If I multiply that by 100%, then I get it as a percentage. So this should tell me 32.23% of that sample by mass was KHP. Okay, so I'd record that here. Your data set is gonna contain three different trials, so you're gonna have three different um, mass percents that you're calculating by doing the experiment three times. You're going to average them and you can use Excel if you put your data into Excel to find the standard deviation. Report that here. Then you're going to have one more um, thing that we want you to figure out. We want to know how precise were your experiments. So how close is um, the data to itself? So for your percent precision, all you're gonna do is take the range of your mass, oops, take the range of your three mass percents. So you'll say the percent KHP you calculated that was the highest, and then you might have guessed, minus the percent KHP that was the lowest. That tells you how far apart your highest and lowest point were and then divide by your average. And this is a percent precision, so multiply by 100%, and that will tell you your percent precision. The goal in this lab was to have a percent precision that's 0.5% or less.
if you were actually on campus, you'd have to redo your titrations until you got three data points that were within 0.5%. Okay. I think that that is all that I want to tell you. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you quick and show you um, what else I need you to do as part of this lab. So for my students, I've created a page in Canvas called KHP Determination Lab. And um, sorry, I'm hoping that this is actually working and that you're not seeing the blank screen anymore. Do I need to? Okay, I'm just going to go with it. So you've watched the lecture. I'll have a link to it here. Then one of the important goals of this lab is reading the burette to the hundredths place. So this is a really excellent video made by Dr. Laura Burns that you can watch to um, figure out how to do that. And then if you come back, the first part of the report form is looking at three different um, volume measurements for the burette and you're going to read them to the this is a great video, if you look right here, a great video of how a titration works. And then finally, after you can kind of get the theory in your, your brain, then you can watch this um, video that we recorded on campus before we all had to leave. Um, there was a few technical errors, but um, you'll get the gist. And then finally, I, you can click on this link right here to upload this student report form. So this is what you're going to be turning in to me. All right, um, thank you so much and good luck.